This video examines the interpretation of trends in pregnancy-related mortality ratios in the Demographic and Health Surveys, or DHS surveys. Data from consecutive DHS surveys are often used to measure progress in various health outcomes because DHS uses standardized methodology that allows for comparisons over time. Program managers and policymakers use trend data to monitor and evaluate ongoing programs and policies, to plan for future interventions, and to decide how to most effectively use resources. The pregnancy-related mortality ratio is an indicator of particular interest to program managers and policymakers because reducing the number of women who die during pregnancy, childbirth, or shortly after is a major global health priority. The pregnancy-related mortality ratio, or PRMR, is the number of pregnancy-related deaths per 100,000 live births. The DHS program defines pregnancy-related mortality as deaths to women while pregnant, during childbirth, or within two months of delivery or end of pregnancy. Pregnancy-related deaths include deaths from any cause during this time period. To learn more about the differences between pregnancy-related and maternal mortality in DHS surveys, check out our video on this topic. The pregnancy-related mortality ratio is an important indicator collected through DHS surveys, but it has limitations which can make interpretation difficult. First, population-based surveys like DHS are not the ideal source of information on pregnancy-related mortality. But in the absence of comprehensive vital statistics systems, many countries rely on DHS data. DHS uses information about the survival of respondents' sisters to measure pregnancy-related mortality. Women interviewed in DHS surveys are asked to list their siblings and then asked about the survival status of all their siblings. In the case of sisters who have died at age 12 or older, the interviewer inquires whether or not the sister died during pregnancy, childbirth, or within the two months following delivery or end of a pregnancy. But relying on a sister's report of death has limitations. Women may not know whether their sister was pregnant or had recently been pregnant when she died or they may not accurately recall the exact timing of a sister's death. Additionally, women may be reluctant to report a sister's death, particularly if the death was abortion-related. These issues can make it hard to collect accurate information about pregnancy-related mortality in DHS surveys. Second, DHS surveys interview a sample of the population, rather than interviewing every person in a country. The sample, or proportion of the total population that is interviewed, is chosen randomly to represent the larger population of a country. All estimates from sample surveys, including DHS surveys, are subject to a certain degree of uncertainty. The estimates, or numbers shown in DHS final reports, are the middle of a range of probable values. This range reflects the degree of uncertainty of the estimate and is called the confidence interval, which has an associated level of confidence, such as 95% or 99%. Here you can see that the 95% confidence interval for the percentage of women aged 15 to 49 in Nepal who are currently in a union ranges from 75.8% to 77.7%. This means that if we drew 100 samples Asking the same question each time, we would expect the resulting estimates to be in this range 95 out of 100 times. Confidence intervals for estimates of the pregnancy-related mortality ratio are often wider than confidence intervals around DHS estimates for other indicators. One reason why the amount of uncertainty around PRMR estimates is relatively large is that pregnancy-related mortality is such a statistically rare event. This means that many women need to be interviewed in order to identify even a small number of deaths and produce reliable PRMR estimates. For example, during the 2016 Nepal DHS, nearly 13,000 women were interviewed who reported about 29,000 sisters. 
yet only 107 pregnancy-related deaths to sisters were reported. DHS surveys only present estimates of PRMR at the national level because too many women would need to be interviewed to allow disaggregation by background characteristics. Because pregnancy-related mortality is statistically rare, its associated reference period is specified to be longer than most other indicators in DHS surveys. The PRMR is typically reported for the seven-year period prior to the survey in order to increase the number of deaths in the numerator of the ratio. It's important to note that although women are asked about the survival status of all their siblings, the PRMR calculation is limited to the deaths within the reference period, most frequently the seven-year period before the survey. Because the PRMR uses a seven-year reference period, the DHS program recommends that countries only collect information on pregnancy-related mortality every 10 years. When these data are collected more frequently than every 10 years, the reference periods for consecutive surveys can overlap. Many countries conduct DHS surveys every five years. Suppose a country conducted DHS surveys in 2010 and 2015, and the pregnancy-related mortality ratio was estimated for each of these surveys using a seven-year reference period. The 2010 survey would measure pregnancy-related deaths that occurred between 2003 and 2010. The 2015 PRMR estimate would include pregnancy-related deaths between 2008 and 2015. You can see that in this example, pregnancy-related deaths that occurred between 2008 and 2010 would be included in both the 2010 and 2015 estimates. This overlap would complicate the interpretation of changes or trends between the two surveys. Both overlapping reference periods and wide confidence intervals make it difficult to determine whether there has been a true change in an indicator. Let's examine pregnancy-related mortality in Nepal DHS surveys. Though Nepal has conducted five DHS surveys as part of the DHS program, pregnancy-related mortality data was only collected every 10 years, so overlapping reference periods are not a concern. The first PRMR estimate from the 1996 Nepal DHS was 543 deaths per 100,000 live births. The estimate from the 2006 survey was 281 deaths per 100,000 live births. Finally, the estimate from the 2016 survey was 259 deaths per 100,000 live births. Looking only at these numbers, we would probably think that pregnancy-related mortality declined from 1996 to 2016, with the dramatic decrease between the 1996 and 2006 surveys and a small decrease between the 2006 and 2016 surveys. However, this interpretation may change once we examine the confidence intervals. The 95% confidence interval for the 1996 PRMR estimate ranges from 397 to 688 deaths per 100,000 live births. This means that if we drew 100 samples, we would expect the pregnancy-related mortality ratio to be between 397 and 688 deaths per 100,000 live births 95 out of 100 times. The 95% confidence interval for the 2006 PRMR estimate ranges from 178 to 384. And the 95% confidence interval for the 2016 PRMR estimate ranges from 151 to 366 deaths per 100,000 live births. Looking at the confidence intervals for these three PRMR estimates, we see that the confidence intervals between 1996 and 2006 do not overlap while the confidence intervals between 2006 and 2016 do overlap. DHS analysts must perform statistical testing to determine whether the differences between these three PRMR estimates signify actual changes in pregnancy-related mortality. But looking at whether confidence intervals overlap with one another is still very informative. 
When confidence intervals do not overlap, we can be reasonably confident that pregnancy-related mortality has actually changed. For example, even if the true PRMR in 1996 was at the lower end of the 95% confidence interval, and the true PRMR for 2006 was at the upper end of the 95% confidence interval, we can conclude that pregnancy-related mortality did in fact decrease between 1996 and 2006. In the case of Nepal, the decrease between the 1996 and 2006 PRMR estimates is statistically significant, while the decrease between the 2006 and 2016 estimates is not statistically significant. DHS final reports generally include text in the chapter on adult and maternal mortality about how to interpret trends in pregnancy-related mortality ratios and often include information about statistical significance. Though the decrease between the 2006 and 2016 Nepal DHS PRMR estimates is not statistically significant, DHS surveys include other indicators which can be more valuable for program managers and policymakers trying to determine whether recent progress is being made in maternal health. For example, quality antenatal care is essential to keeping women healthy during pregnancy and saving lives. Delivery assistance from a skilled provider improves childbirth outcomes and increases the odds of survival for both women and newborns. In Nepal, skilled assistance during delivery has increased from 19% of births in 2006 to 58% of births in 2016. Postnatal care can help prevent or treat conditions that can contribute to pregnancy-related mortality. Furthermore, in contrast to PRMR estimates, DHS data on antenatal delivery and postnatal care are all presented by background characteristics, which can help program managers and policymakers to more effectively target interventions and distribute resources. While DHS estimates of the pregnancy-related mortality ratio are an important part of the global health evidence base, they are not a precise measure of pregnancy-related mortality, and their limitations can make their interpretation difficult. DHS estimates of PRMR can be viewed as a broad measure of the general health of the population and of women's status. Program managers and policymakers may find other indicators included in DHS surveys, such as antenatal delivery and postnatal care, more useful for assessing progress and making decisions about maternal health programs and policies. For more information, please visit our website, the user forum, or watch our other videos on this topic. Mm -hmm.